And turning now to Haiti, where the Caribbean country is reeling from a devastating earthquake, the coronavirus pandemic and political instability. Tropical depression Grace drenched the island Monday after an extremely powerful earthquake ravaged the region on Saturday. More than 1,400 people are now confirmed dead and 6,000 are injured. Hospitals in the West are reportedly overwhelmed with patients being treated in stairwells, patios and hallways. For more on this, let's bring in CBSN anchor Vlad Dutier, who's in Port-au-Prince. Good morning, Vlad. Uh, let us know what's going on. What's the latest where you are? Laura, one of the things that we were able to do yesterday was to visit hospitals that have become overwhelmed by thousands of injured patients. And that's just the hospitals that are still standing in the hardest hit areas of the island. Many of those are in rubble, uh, leaving those in need scrambling, scrambling here to Port-au-Prince. We were able to visit a hospital yesterday uh, and speak to a doctor who explained to us that over the last 48 hours, they've seen over 100 crushed victims. Uh, that's just in 48 hours, Laura. And we can see behind you, Vlad, gray skies. It looks like it's very damp. How did Tropical Storm Grace end up impacting some of the rescue efforts yesterday? Thankfully, it wasn't uh, that bad, Laura. Uh, we got a little bit of rain, but we were expecting much, much worse. And it's good news because one of the things that officials were worried about is in the area closest to the epicenter, many of the victims of the earthquake, the survivors of the earthquake, are still living outdoors. Their homes are gone. They've been completely destroyed. So just like in 2010, where we saw thousands of people living and sleeping on the streets without any cover over their head, there was a real fear that the tropical depression would bring flooding, mudslides, which would lead to disease and hunger. Hopefully, we haven't been out to the affected areas yet. We're heading out as soon as we finish speaking with you. We'll take a look, but hopefully that hasn't happened. And the part of Haiti where the earthquake hit has been plagued by gang violence before the earthquake. So the U.N. is now reporting security concerns for humanitarian personnel. What's the security situation like? Sadly, Laura, in all the years that I've been coming to Haiti as a reporter, it's minimal. In other words, the security, uh, there's no security in the island, in some parts of the island. I shouldn't say the entirety of the country, but certainly the roads. When we think about the roads that are needed for emergency personnel, that are needed for fire and first responders um, and, and police, those roads are impassable, either because of natural disaster or because, frankly, they're controlled by bandits. So that means, even for us, we have to helo into the affected areas. We can't really drive because we are unsure of how safe it is. And that's something that is remarkable. Haiti has never been able to secure its roads in the last 15 or 20 years. The roads have always been problematic, um, which means it's very, very difficult to move materiel, to, me to move uh, rescue and medical supplies, food distribution is really, really difficult. You have to fly into affected areas. And so, sadly, that's part of the problem here. And as I mentioned to you yesterday, you know, a lot of the problems that are facing Haiti are in the wake of natural disasters, which every country around the world faces. Many of the problems here are man-made. In other words, lack of government accountability, lack of accountability from their elected officials, NGOs that run rampant around the country, raising a lot of money and funneling it more into their overhead and less to the needs of the Haitian people. Um, and other countries that have meddled, frankly, in this country's politics um, and domestic affairs for, for many, many years. Um, and yet, Haiti remains this miracle. We've talked mm -hmm. about this uh, over the course of our coverage. Uh, the first independent black nation in the Western Hemisphere, a beacon of hope and independence for all people around the world, taking their inspiration from the revolutions in France and the United States. The people here fought for their independence and their liberty, and they gained it only to suffer from the ineptitudes of those around them who sought to do them harm. Laura? It was New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio speaking yesterday saying that Haiti has just been through hell and back and, and, and just continues to experience the, the very worst of any situation. So our, our thoughts 
uh, with with the citizens of Haiti. The death toll for this earthquake was adjusted upwards yesterday to uh, 1,400 now, I believe. Is it expected to continue to rise significantly, Vlad? Sadly, Laura, we can expect that the death toll will rise. Uh, relief and rescue efforts were hampered yesterday by the tropical depression. Um, and so that means today, hopefully, if the weather holds, uh, rescuers will be back at it, trying to find survivors and sadly uh, looking for the remains of those who have perished. Uh, and certainly we can expect that the death toll will rise. But hopefully we will not see the numbers that we saw in 2010 because the areas that were hardest hit this time around are certainly less populated than here in Port-au-Prince. Well, that is a bit of good news. Vlad, thank you so much. And Vlad will be back later today with the very latest um, out of Haiti. And don't forget, you can also check out Vlad's 2016 CBSN Originals documentary, Haiti, A Homegrown Recovery, on the devastating earthquake that crippled the country back in 2010 and the aid groups that mobilized to try to help the country. You can stream the documentary right now on cbsnews.com.